Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I present you the long-awaited breakdown of the grass from Lucen. Now I've made this version of the grass in a standalone project with vanilla Unreal, so that like the trees, people can recreate it without needing the custom build with tune shading models. The source files are also available on Gumroad and Patreon for those who'd like to download the project. And I'm sure some of you may have figured out my inspiration for this scene by now. It's from my childhood, and no, it's not Breath of the Wild. The shading here is slightly different to the shading in Lucent because of the different shading model, but not significantly. I've also left the Toon parameter nodes there, so if you do want to use the Toon shading model in your own build, you can. So I've designed this grass to be a good starting point. You can tweak a lot of stuff, you can change it, um, pretty much get all sorts of looks by changing a bunch of the parameters here. There are a few things I've changed in the project settings. So the first thing you want to do is change um, mesh distance fills. You want to turn that on. Another thing is to turn off static lighting. So just to force static lighting off. And the third thing that I did is optional, um, but I turned on forward shading because that's how I have it in Lucent and um, it improves performance a lot and doesn't change the look at all. So after those things, um, it's worth mentioning that the grass cards themselves are from the kite demo and it's using a texture as well, so if you want to use those, just make a kite demo project and uh, migrate the cards over. The, the reason I use these is they already have the vertex colors set up the normal setup, everything, it's uh, a bit more convenient than using my own. The material itself also has a lot of uh, techniques that I got from the Kite Demo Grass, uh, so I'll be going over those as well. So for this scene, I just made a basic landscape and um, sculpted a little bit just for some of the undulations there. and. For the grass, I made a landscape grass type. If I open that up, you can see I'm using the mesh from the kite demo. The grass density of 250, but you can set it to whatever you prefer. And the scaling, I've set it to free so that it can scale on every axis. Um, but if you want to keep the the same profile as the the default, like the mesh itself, just set it to locked or uniform. I've got some random rotation. I'm aligning it to the surface, which means that uh, it will have the same angle as the surface and it won't always be pointing directly up, which uh, is a bit more natural for grass. And I am also casting dynamic shadow. So you can turn this off. Um, in Lucent, it's actually turned off for performance. It does save quite a lot on performance, depending on how your uh, directional light is set up. But um, there's the difference between turning it on and off. You can see that just near the bases, um, it can be quite nice to have dynamic shadow, but it's not necessary. And with dynamic shadow off, um, I can go to my light source and set the shadowing amount to 1, which is the default, but when I had dynamic shadow I set it to 0.5 um, and that just sort of softens these shadows out because if you leave the light at the default uh, the shadows are a bit too harsh, so that's my um, directional light there. What I've also done is enabled um, density scaling, that doesn't really matter in this project, but um, it basically lets the engine scalability settings determine the grass density, which is really nice. So if you want to have graphics settings in your game, the grass density will be changed um, at different engine scalability settings. Okay, so once I made the grass type, I've just got a really basic landscape material that I um, put the grass in. So I've just fed zero into the metallic and spec, uh, one into roughness, so it's just a, a flat color. Um, I've used a, gr a grass um, uh, output and just fed 
a value of 1 into that, which means that the coverage across the whole landscape will always be a uniform one. Uh, this is usually where you'd put your uh, landscape layer node here. So if you've painted a landscape layer for grass, or if you're using it from a texture, or from um, uh, like Houdini engine, if you're importing your landscape with that, then you'd feed your uh, landscape layer into that. So landscape layer sample. If you've got a layer called grass, then you just feed that in. So once I've done that, I've also um, just made the color with a, a, an amount of emission as well that matches the grass. So it's point 0.2 here. OK, let's get into the grass material itself. So I'll go through each section and sort of go over what it's doing. I'll start with the parameters, um, the simplest. I've got the specular, roughness, and um, metallic. They're all sort of parameterized in the material instance so that I can change them on the fly. Uh, for the tune shading model, I was using these parameters as well, which um, had inputs in the tune shading model. But for the purpose of this project, I'm not. Uh, but they're there if you if you do want to use them. And they are named the respective um, inputs, so they would match up if you have the tune shading model. OK, and I've also got an emissive amount here. I tend to find that with the grass, uh, it's nice to make it partially emissive. And if you have a night scene, you can just change that um, through blueprints uh, based on your time of day, which is really simple in the level blueprint. Um, but if you um, if you set the emissive to zero, it sort of is a bit too dark. I feel the shadowed areas um, feel a bit gross and just doesn't look as nice. So 0.3 is the value I went with for the grass, but you can play with it, find what works for you. And so there are four custom UV. Um, channels here, and to add those, you just uh, search for UV in the material details, and you can just set the number here, and it'll add the the amount of uh, pins for you there. So what this custom UV normal setting is doing here, it's creating a normal uh, that's pointing upwards, basically, and then it's making sure that it's transformed. Um, from the mesh's local space to world space, so that the mesh's orientation doesn't matter. It will always be pointing up relative to the mesh. And then that's fed into the custom UVs here. And the wind normal setup, which sort of looks like clouds floating above the grass, it's a pretty cool technique I got from the kite demo. Basically what it's doing is taking a normal map, and it's blending between that and a value here, which is um, like a, a normal that's pointing upwards. And what that's doing is then getting transformed by this normal here, which was um, defined along the length of the mesh um, to be pointing upwards. It's taking that, and then it's transforming that vector so that it's always oriented uh, correctly relative to the mesh. And that's creating those um, normal sort of at the tips there. And it's using the vertex color, uh, which is a ramp along the mesh, to, um, to multiply that. Or oh, sorry, to lerp that. And then that feeds directly into the normals. So for the wind, I've taken the vertex color, which is, um, again, the ramp along the length of the blades. And I'm using that as the multiplier for the weight. And then I've just made an alternate version of the grass wind material function. And the only thing I changed in there um, was to add these scalar parameters here, which will basically allow me to scale the wind uh, in size with um, these parameters, the wind size. So I can show you what that looks like here. So that will make it smaller, make it very large. 
And as you can see, that sort of just will change um, the scale of the noise. I just liked having that extra level of control to really dial, dial it in. And so that's relatively simple. That's what's feeding into the world position offset. And for the grass interaction, I haven't included that in this scene um, because there's a tutorial out there made by someone else and they have included their scene files and everything. Um, so if you want to check that out and merge that into your scene or follow the tutorial, I'll link that in the description. But uh, that will feed into the additional world position offset here if you implemented that. So that's how you blend them together, blend that together with the wind. And there's a um, distance camera fade here set up. Also, um, it's basically just fading um, the all of this effect uh, over a distance. So if you want it to fade out after a hundred units or a thousand, or don't want it at all, you just change the camera fade uh, for the this sort of cloudy normals changing thing. And the alpha, of course, um, I'm using a texture from Kenny and L, uh, one of his grass textures. I highly recommend this guy's stuff. He makes so many free game assets, it's unbelievable. Uh, I'll put a link to this pack in the description, but it's super high quality uh, sprites and Save me having to make some myself, yeah. Okay, so for the color of the grass, it's using a lerp based on the vertex color again, which is along the length of the blades. And that's multiplied by a um, detail texture here. So this is this texture is from the kite demo. It's a, sort of a, just a noise. And that's multiplied um, by the vertex color, so you've got a mask there that sort of provides a bit of variation uh, for the color again. Uh, lerping between these values um, for the grass tips and the grass color, and that means that I can come into the grass material and uh, change the grass tip color however I want. gives an, uh, an extra level of control. So if the grass tips um, were the same as the, the grass color, it would just be very plain and quite boring. So you can see how much difference that makes, having the tips a different color and sort of just ramping it along the length of the blades. So now I'll go over um, the parameter settings on the instance, uh, which I've been covering as I go, but I'll go through them again. So we've got the camera fade length, um, set that to 25,000, that's for the sort of the normals um, noise that's set up for the, sorry, for the wind. Um, the bias of that, so just how, how much it adds. And then the emissive amount, which set to 0.3, makes everything nice and soft. Uh, the PBR stuff, roughness, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't do too much at all because uh, it's all just flat grass. Um, the thing that you don't want to do is have specular because that'll <laughs> make your grass reflective. Um, I mean, it does work in some instances, like the kite demo uses it, I know, but uh, for this kind of grass, no. And this is the um, scaling of that detail texture, so um, that'll scale this, uh, which is really only affecting um, the this lerp between um, the grass tips and the, the grass color. So it doesn't do a whole lot. Then you've got the uh, the size of the wind noises um, in the simple grass wind. 
than the intensity, so you can sort of t determine how how windy it is or how heavy the wind is. And then the speed that'll you know speed it up, slow it down, and that's just all driving parameters in the um, the grass wind node um, for the speed and intensity and stuff. And then you've got the the speed settings and the tiling settings for the normals. So stuff like this. That could be pretty nice for like a time lapse with the clouds, uh, shadowing, stuff like that. Um, so essentially there are two sort of wind setups in this. Uh, one is actually affecting the the position offset of the grass and then the other is changing the normals and they're not necessarily related to each other but I think it creates quite a nice effect. Um, it's sort of not really like too physically real but it works for the stylized look that I'm going for for Lucen. And, and that's that's pretty much it for the setup of the grass. Um, I'll show you a couple of um, tips as well. So one thing I've done in this scene is to change the temporal AA settings. So these are the settings I've set. I've got um, the current frame weight, frame weight as 0.2, um, the tone mapper sharpen on, and set the samples for the temporal AA to 4. And these are some settings I found in a Reddit thread. Um, I'll link that in the description as well. They sort of make the default temporal AA much more crisp and nice because it can be a real blurry mess sometimes, especially for this sort of thing, like where you've got a lot of detail on the edges. And so when I play that, it's like, yeah, much crisper. You don't get like blurry um, temporal AA. You can also, because it's using the forward um, forward renderer, you can also use um, MSAA, which is multi-sample AA, and that is very crisp. So you definitely have to turn off um, the tone mapper sharpening if you do that, because um, you don't want to be sharpening on top of what's already very, very sharp. Um, yeah, but that's uh, also quite nice. It is more of a performance hit, so um, use at your discretion. The frame rate here is not really accurate because I've got the editor open behind this window, so it would be much higher usually. Um, but that's MSAA, yeah, it's pretty good. At the moment I'm using Temporal AA in Lucent because I found that um, performance-wise using those um, changes that I showed, uh, it works much nicer and it's pretty much, you can't tell the difference. So this is the default Temporal AA. You can see it's like quite blurry before I turn on the um, Tone Mapper Sharpen and the other settings. And that, uh, yeah that sort of cleans it up and makes it quite a bit sharper. That's my rant about uh, anti-aliasing. Um, but yeah, again, I didn't inter um, implement the interaction, but I'll link the tutorial in the description. They've also got files there. It shouldn't be a problem to just um, put, put that in there or follow the tutorial to get it in if you really want it. And yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope there's something useful here. And the project files will be available on Patreon and Gumroad. I'll put those links in the description. Thanks. And don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more. And wishlist Lucent on Steam, I'll put the link in the description. Cheers.